Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at RIA with a Hopkins & Allen XL Navy pattern revolver. Now, a little while ago I did a video on a Hopkins & Allen XL8 Army, and this is basically the 38 caliber companion. So, uh, general nomenclature has always been that Navy pattern guns are either 36 or 38, depending on whether they're muzzle loaders or cartridge firing guns. Army pattern gun, Army pattern revolvers are 44 caliber. So, the XLA Army was in 44 rimfire or centerfire. This guy is in 38 rimfire. Now, there were two versions of this made. There was actually the XL Navy and the XL Police. They're the same gun, they differ only in barrel length, with approximately a 4 inch barrel for the Police model and approximately a 6 inch barrel for the Navy model. Now, Hopkins and Allen was a company that attempted to build guns for a wide variety of different markets, and they kind of got pigeonholed as a maker of cheap and unreliable little suicide special revolvers, which really hampered their efforts to sell what truly was a relatively high-end, very well-made service revolver. Let me show you the details on this guy. Hopkins and Allen also did the manufacturing for the Merwin and Hulbert company, uh, producing, actually being the manufacturer of the excellent quality uh, large frame Merwin and Hulbert revolvers, and we see some elements of that in here. Not quite as much as we saw in the XL8 Army, but the grip style is definitely very similar to the Merwin and Hulbert. Now, where the Merwin and Hulbert and the XL8 Armies had this interesting vertically sliding uh, loading gate, the XL Navy and police, by extension, have no loading gate at all. This is uh, much simpler, on the, more on the style of the small pocket revolvers, where there's just an opening in the recoil shield. You'll notice that as long as the uh, cylinder is locked uh, in position, no cartridge can actually escape through this slot, because both of those chambers are partially covered. Uh, if you want to unload this thing, what you would do is put the gun at half cock, which releases the cylinder to spin freely. You then have a cylinder uh, a release latch over here, which is very similar in style to the uh, the Hopkins and Allen little pocket guns, except on the pocket guns that releases the cylinder axis uh, to remove the cylinder, and on this it releases it to act as an ejector rod. So I can pull that in there, and then one at a time index and eject spent cartridges. We can then push that back over. It is spring-loaded here, by the way. Well, it's spring-loaded and a little bit sticky. So we can push that over, push the ejector rod back in, and uh, that locks it in place. And then we can go through and reload the thing one round at a time. Uh, it is also worth pointing out, in 1875 Hopkins and Allen had patented what they called the safety cylinder, which is basically this little feature in between each pair of chambers. And the idea there was that on a rimfire revolver you could line up uh, that feature uh, right in between two chambers, and then lock the hammer into that notch. Oops, that did not do it. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, you'll notice now, looking at the front of the gun, we are directly in between two of the cylinders, and the hammer is sitting down in one of those little notches. So the cylinder can't rotate, and if you accidentally drop the gun or otherwise strike the hammer, it can't detonate a cartridge, because it's not sitting on a live cartridge. But the gun can be loaded because of that intermediate safety notch. There were features kind of like that on some of the Colt percussion revolvers, but uh, for a rimfire cartridge revolver this was something that Hopkins and Allen had patented, and they made wide use of it. They put it on everything from their really cheap, really simple little compact guns, all the way up to their top of the line models, like the XL8 and XL Navy. We have a serial number on this on the bottom of the barrel. This is number 637. Um, I believe total production was something close to a thousand um, of each pattern, although I don't know the exact distribution. So about 2700 total between the Navy, the police, and the XL8 Army. We have a Hopkins and Allen uh, mark there on the top of the barrel, and it has two patents on it, in 1871 and in 1875. 1871 is this uh, cylinder release latch, 1875 is the safety cylinder. 
And then on the top of the frame, we have the model designation, which is XL Navy, and the cartridge, actually, which is 38 100, so it's a 100 grain projectile. Uh, 38 caliber. The marking here does not specify the powder charge. Overall, this is a very comfortable revolver. Uh, single action, robust, reliable. Uh, with 38 100 rim fire ammunition, it would have been very comfortable to shoot. All in all, really a pretty nice gun. By the mid 1880s, Hopkins and Allen would stop bothering to manufacture the XL. Navy, police, and also the XL8 armies, uh, because there just weren't enough people buying them and it didn't make sense to keep manufacturing more. Which is unfortunate for the company, there's no technical issue with the guns, they were well made, Hopkins and Allen was capable of excellent manufacture, and this is a pretty good example of it. But they got pigeonholed by marketing, largely, and um, as that, that's as often the cause of a business failure as an actual problem with the product. So. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It's neat to see a, a rare gun like this in such really excellent condition. Thanks for watching.